Lady gets mad that I bought my son an airplane seat. My name's Ryan from Ask Reddit Tells, and today we're going to be looking at that. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to stay up to date on all the latest videos. I believe this goes here. It turned really long, I sincerely apologize. TLDR at the bottom. So I have a son who's currently two and a half years old, but we've been traveling by plane since he was six months old due to our living an 18 hour drive from my family. Parents younger sibling, grandparents, etc. In the US, you generally don't need to buy a plane ticket for a child under two years old. You can buy a seat if you want to bring your baby in their carrier, or just want to use a car seat, but they can also be considered a lap child and sit in your lap for free. When my son was about one and a half years old, we were flying back to my hometown to go visit my family. We were flying on an airplane named the opposite of Northeast. On this airline, an adult with a child under six years old, IIRC, gets to board right after the A1 through 10-ish boarding numbers, and before the A11 through 60 or whatever it is, which was helpful to me to get me some extra time to find a seat and settle for my kid. Now he has under two, so he could have flown for free, and sat in my lap. But after the flight, we had taken a few months before that, where he was hell on wheels, and I was mortified by how terribly we probably made our roommate's flights. I decided to buy him a plane ticket so we would have a little more room for our things. Diaper bag, toys to entertain him, snacks, juice slash breast milk, blanket, etc. I hated to feel like I was inconveniencing other passengers with my child when I had to keep him to such a small confined space to begin with. It was much better to give him some extra room in the form of his own seat so as to not crowd others when he wanted to get out of my lap or try to look out the window, etc. Plus, then I could sit behind him and provide a buffer for his wayward feet. He was generally, and still is, a really good little traveler. But every one and a half year old has their moments as parents can understand. I swear I do my best to keep him under control. If you've never flown with a child under two as a lap child, then you should know that when you get back to check your bags at the airport, you get a normal boarding pass for yourself as well as a boarding pass for the child that clearly says lap infant across the top of it. Otherwise, if you buy your child a ticket, they get a normal boarding pass like everyone else with your boarding group slash number. This airline has rows of three seats on either side of a very narrow aisle. I tend to stick to the far back rows just in case I need to leave the seat with him when we're in the air, and also try to put some distance between us and the other passengers. So we board with family boarding, I grab two seats all the way in the very back row, shove all our stuff into the seats and go about trying to settle our things in. My son decided to sit in the seat by the window and was watching the ground crew do their thing. I was sitting in the middle seat behind him. I was in the aisle seat and the aisle seat was empty, and the plane started to fill up, but again, we were the very last row so most people found a seat before they made it to us, and or saw I had a kid with me and decided to sit elsewhere. Can't blame them. When the plane was about three-fourths full, I hear someone say, um, excuse me, in a rather snobby voice. I turned to a little girl maybe seven to eight years old. Before I could even respond, the entitled mother demands that I move the aisle seat and take my son with me so that her daughter could sit by the window. I want to say that if my son was flying free and he was a lap infant, I wouldn't have had an issue with moving to the aisle seat to let the little girl sit by the window, if the mom had asked me nicely. However, I had purchased two tickets with my own money, which isn't easy to swing when you're a single mom, and even if I moved to the aisle seat, my son would have the middle seat, and she'd have to sit apart from her daughter. I was not going to be used as a babysitter for someone else's kid on a flight, even if I did have my own child to deal with. I tried to explain this to her. Went a little something like this. Me? Oh, I would, but I bought two seats, and even if I moved, there'd only be one seat open, so you might want to try somewhere else so that you can both sit together. There were still entire rows with emptiness on the plane at this point. Entitled Mom? You're lying. He's clearly not even two yet, and under the two, they fly free and sit in your lap. Please move now. Yes, they can fly for free in your lap, but I specifically bought him his own ticket so that he could have his own seat and more room. There are several rows a bit farther forward that are still empty and have window seats. 
Well, he's small. You should just hold him. My daughter wants to sit by the window and slash need to be in the last row, so just hold him so we can sit here. The very back row on the other side was taken up already. I'm really sorry, but no, we need the extra space. I bought and paid for the extra seat. I'm not going to give it up just because you feel entitled to this space. Our things are already settled and stowed away. At this point, EM is working herself up into a tizzy and has caught the attention of the older couple sitting across the aisle. The husband tries to tell the EM to just choose somewhere else to sit, but she snapped at him to mind his own business. Kinda hard inside such a small space. So when she turned her attention back to me, and now my fussing child because this strange lady is yelling at mommy, the wife waved over to one of the flight attendants who came over. And that went along these lines. Flight attendant, hello! How are we all okay over here? No, this girl refuses to put her son in her lap and to make room for us even though he's clearly less than two and can fit in her lap. Ma'am, is your child a lap infant? He is less than two years old. I see, I told you, make her move. But I did purchase a ticket for him because I knew he would appreciate having some extra space to get out of my lap. I had grabbed both of our normal paying customer boarding passes and handed them to the flight attendant. See? That doesn't prove anything. They give boarding passes for lap infants. Turning back to EM. Yes, they do give boarding passes for lap infants, but this is not a lap infant boarding pass. So I'm sorry, but she paid for that seat and there is no assigned seating. You So you can't ask her to move. Started going crazy, screaming at me. The F.A., her kid is flying, or crying, but I think it may have been more out of embarrassment than the flight attendant was telling them no. Anyways, the flight attendant ended up threatening to have her removed from the plane by air marshal if she didn't find a different seat. E.M. huffed angrily, promised to write a terrible review, and told the F.A. specifically she was going to call opposite of Northeast Airlines corporate office and have them fired for treating E.M. and her daughter so poorly. The daughter did get her window seat further up the plane. The flight attendant rolled her eyes where only I and the older couple could see and she apologized for YA. The rest of the flight went smoothly. My kid laughed when the plane took off and then passed out in his own seat with his head on my leg about 20 minutes into the flight and slept the whole time. And the flight attendant gave me a complimentary glass of wine once he was asleep. I told the pilots at the end of the flight how wonderful she is. I saw EM inside the airport afterwards as we made our way to baggage, berating a cleaning staff member because the airport Burger King was closed at 11.30pm, as if the poor staff member even had control over that to begin with. I pointed a TSA person towards them and went on my wary way to see my not-so-baby sister. This was about a year ago and I haven't thought about it really since until one of my coworkers said something that reminded me of it so I decided to share. Sorry it was so long. Too long didn't read? Eccentric mother tried to force me and my son out of our seats that I paid for just because she couldn't sit literally anywhere else. FA confirms I paid for both seats and threatens to call air marshals if EA doesn't sit her ass down in a different seat. Got a complimentary glass of wine? The rest of the flight was fine, saw EM berating a cleaning staff, and sicked TSA on her. ETA? I took down my baby tax because I didn't realize I was showing the picture at the top of the post and I got freaked out. The woman is lucky the FA didn't have her escorted off the plane when the woman said she was going to get fired. Right? I think it's because a later flight, the flight attendant probably just wanted to get to the other end so she could find a hotel to sleep in and calling TSA slash air marshal would have probably delayed us all a bit depending on how much EM fought. ETA, I did tell the TSA agent that I pointed in her direction about what happened on the plane and the flight attendant. Don't know what, if anything, happened after that. I just wanted to go eat some breakfast tacos at 11.30pm and sleep in my childhood bedroom, lol. It probably was a later flight. If this is the airline I inferred based off of your clever name, they are on tight schedules. Screw with takeoff slash landing and you cost the company a huge amount of money so they definitely will have you escorted off. It probably was a later flight. 
I have a relative who works for another airline and said relative likes to explain to people to think of the flight attendants as sky waitresses, but they're actually like sky policemen who also get you drinks if you ask nicely. Seems more like sky babysitters with the amount of tiny-brained people they have to deal with. Most flight attendants can restrain passengers quite quickly if needed. They wouldn't give you nearly as many chances as most police do, so it is a good idea to listen to what they tell you to do. My son always had his own seat. I can't imagine holding him for any huge length of time in a teeny tiny seat. I've never experienced such a horrible mom on a flight, but I strapped him down into a car seat for trips. I'm mean that way. Glad the people on the other side were compassionate and helpful. It's not super fun. When he was littler, it wasn't bad. I'd just put him in the body carrier and I'd have to do that. Plus, then I could nurse him during takeoff and landing to keep his little ears from popping. He never took a passy, but even when I could buy him a ticket, I couldn't make my way through the airport with him, plus diaper bag slash carry-on, plus car seat by myself, which is always how I travel with him. Just the two of us. I've always had way more good experiences than I've had bad experiences. We flew back to my home just this past September in our shorter 45 minute flight. My kid was screaming and freaking out the whole time. I tried literally everything to calm him down. Tried nursing, tried snacks slash juice, tried putting a movie on his tablet for him. Everything, but he was not having it. I was crying because I was so embarrassed and I felt so bad. This little elderly man who reminded me of my grandfather came from a few rows up and sat next to me, in what was my son's seat but he wasn't using it, and asked if he could try to help. I just nodded wordlessly and he made a motion like he was go asking to take him, and since we were in the air and he couldn't go anywhere, I let him hold my son. He stayed sitting by me and had my kid calm down and asleep in less than 10 minutes, doing nothing but holding him and rubbing his forehead softly. He was like a guardian angel. The lady across the aisle passed me some tissues and told me quietly that she remembered having to travel alone with her kids and when they were little, I was doing my best not to worry about the others. Of course I cried more because I'm a young mom and it was just so nice of them to help me when I was so overwhelmed. Once my kid was deep asleep, the man handed him back to me carefully and spent a few minutes talking to me, telling me it was okay to get frustrated and overwhelmed and that it was okay to ask for help, that it was okay to cry along with him. I still don't know if I believe God does exist, but he was definitely working through that man that day. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. If you like this video, make sure to check out some of our other stuff and even subscribe. As always, my name's Ryan from Ask Tells, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.